Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. Today I am playing through the Dragon Wand of Kryn. This is part two. It is the one-on-one -on -one adventure game book written by Greg Falgren and Nancy Falgren and released August 1st, 1987. It is Braca Reaper, <laughs> Reapember the fourth, and uh, my name is Adam. Now, I'd like to take a moment and thank my collaborator patrons, the Heroes of the Lance, and invite you to consider becoming a patron or member of this channel by visiting the links in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link. Okay, so again, there are 11 of these one-on-one -on -one adventure game books. This is the 10th and only one in the entire set that's in Dragonlance. Each of these stories in the series was released as a box set, which contained two books. The books are designed for two players, with each person taking a different book and controlling different characters. Most of the stories are set in the world of TSR role-playing games, mainly Advanced Dungeons and & Dragons and Marvel superheroes, though the second book is a generic space opera. We left off with Patrick, Sir Patrick, or Lord Patrick as it were, and ostensibly um, both Lord Patrick and his party and Lord Erikan and his party are both in search of the Dragon Wand of Kryn, thought to be in the library, a secret library, in Tarsus. And so they both flew into Tarsus at the same time, one on Dragonback and one on Griffinback, and uh, entered Tarsus City in very different ways. So if you'll remember Lord Erikan, here, let me switch over to his frame. Lord Erikan and his team ended up going to the front gate and were pulled to the mayor's office, who ended giving them a scroll and uh, asking, uh, you know, if they wanted any help, and they gave him a guard to go with him to where the library was supposed to be. And Lord Patrick and his party ended up going into a secret door that Doorknob the Kender found, and fought our entire way, <laughs> like through everything. So as we stand right now, Lord Patrick, um, just uh, was accosted by guards, and I believe we escaped the guards, or went to try to escape the guards. And Lord Erikan ended up, um, well, let me look where he ended up. With the guard, they were going into, like, around some corner or something, and, and that's where we're picking up. So we left off with Lord Erikan, so we're going to pick, or Lord, Lord Patrick, I'm getting names mixed up. And we're going to pick up today with Lord Erikan, and let's find out what he discovered when they rounded that corner. And we have an image, which is not a good sign. This is the image that we see here. For those of you AD&D players of old, you should know what that is. Every race, every kind of person seems to be represented by at least one statue. As you look around, you find yourself drawn into a tall statue of a human fighter. It is incredible how lifelike it looks. As you get closer to the statue, your perception tells that this is a person who has been turned to stone. All the statues are of people turned to stone. Realizing the danger you're in, you call sharply to your companions. We've got to get out of here! Unfortunately, before you can take more than a few steps, a cockatrice appears from behind another statue, and now you see the origin of the stone figures. The touch of this vicious, bird-like creature turns flesh to stone. Knowing that the temple lies along the path now blocked by the cockatrice, do you stand and fight the creature, turn to page 66, or try to escape it, turn to page 83. Uh, <laughs> okay, I have no idea how strong a cockatrice is. In my memory, they're pretty tough. Um, for those of you who may want to join me live and play this with me, let me know in the YouTube chat whether or not you would, uh, you know, fight or whether you would escape. I got to think about this. So I've got two fighters, extra fighters with me. I've got Clem and then I have Braum, the guard that the um, uh, mayor lent me. I've got Gnarl, my cleric, who can throw a magic stone for seven damage or hit for five or claw for five, that is. Let's see, Lord Erikan has... Shocking Grasp, Burning Hands, Magic Missile. Like, I could attempt to kill it, but I don't want to be turned to stone. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, man. 
You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to escape it. That's what I'm going to try to do. Turn to 83. Let's see if we can get out of here. Okay, so he's going to try to escape. Every page turn, we have to go to a new person. Oh, let me mark that down. 83. Every page turn, we have to swap back and forth. So now we're back at Lord Patrick. Gotta love Lord Patrick, who left off on page 60. And we have an image here. Sure, we'll be happy to go along. You agree. You indicate your companions to make a break for it at the first opportunity. Your opportunity comes sooner than you expect, when from around the corner comes a whole troop of hobgoblins. You and the city guards will fight the hobgoblins together for this battle only. They will take damage first. All right. Well, the city guards have 25 hit points. Collectively, the guards do eight hit points of damage. Tell the Lord Arikan reader to turn to the encounter table on page 150 and run encounter 15. All right. So they do eight damage. Got to take notes on these people. Okay, they have 25 hit points. Collectively, they do 8 damage. Hey, Skull Cowboy. Hey, if you've got one of these, you can join in and uh, play with me if you like. Uh, you can run either of them, Lord Patrick or Lord Arikin. Okay, so we are on Lord Patrick's frame. Lord Arikin needs to turn to the encounter table. 15, encounter 15. Hobgoblins. They have 19 hit points. The Hobgoblins attack for 5 hit points of damage. All right, let's do it. Now, you can see that I added the uh, combat table here. If you're not running full screen, you're probably not going to be able to see it, but I just figure it's an extra graphic that you can take advantage of. So the Hobgoblins are attacking first, and um, Lord Patrick and his party are the defenders first. So the attacking roll is 17. The defending roll is 19. So we go to our table, 17... And 19 is a double hit. Oh, shit. Oh, and here's another little note. For those of you who uh, joined last time, Lord Patrick, uh, I was running the encounters wrong, and we didn't figure that out, or I didn't figure that out until like halfway through the live stream. And so I went back and reran all of those encounters, and the current hit points you guys see on screen right now are the result of the rerunning of those encounters. Just to make sure. Oh, that's too bad, Skull. Okay. Well, if you ever get a mount, we can uh, run it again sometime. Or you can just pick up wherever I leave off. Totally up to you. Uh, okay, so I did, did double damage. The hobgoblins do five. So that's ten damage. Oof. That's a lot. Oh, gosh. I wish I had those braces of defense on Lord Patrick, but he can't use them because he's wearing plate and not leather. Okay, but it is our turn now. Let's see. I can do hold a person. I can just kill them. You know what? We're going to have the guards go first. So the guards attack at 6. Um, the hobgoblins defend at 20. And that's a miss. Thanks, guards. Jerk faces. <laughs> Jiren is 11 and 15. 11 and 15 is a double hit. Sweet. And she's got that new wooden club, so that's 12 damage. And the hobgoblins have 19 hit points. So they only have seven hit points left. Lord Patrick comes in to mop up a two and a three. Two, three is a miss. Doorknob is going to throw two daggers. The first dagger is 17 and 14. 17 and 14 is a hit. Uh, and the daggers do three damage. So they only have four hit points left. The second dagger, 19 and seven. Seven is a hit. And that's another three damage. So they have one hit point left and they attack. So seven and 14, they attack seven, defend is 14, that's a miss. The guards attack. The guards get a 19 and the defense is 14. The guards do a double damage attack. That's 16, it only had one hit point left. So the hobgoblins drop. Okay. If you lose all your hit points, turn to 152. If you defeat the Hobgoblins and the City Guards have lost all their hit points, turn to 90. If you defeat the Hobgoblins but the City Guards still have hit points, turn to page 70. Well, 
we whipped some took us. So we're going to 70. One guardsman remains. You look at him warily. Is he going to try? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so that was the end of him. Now we're going to move over to Lord Eric. And I got to remember these page turn. You know what I mean? So we left off at 83. So 83 has this interesting image. And remember, we're trying to sneak by the cockatrice. On the faces of the statues are looks of surprise and fear. You don't want to join them. Quickly, you thread your way among them, heading for the opposite side of the garden. Another gate is in sight when an eerie laugh stops you. Out from behind a statue steps a man. The flowing black robes he wears indicates that he's a wizard, one dedicated to evil. Do you like my garden? He asks with a chuckle. <laughs> Why don't you stay a little longer? We'd really like to, you say, watching him carefully and wondering if perhaps you should say that you too adhere to the cause of evil. However, we're in a hurry. Maybe we'll come back later. I think you'll stay now. The wizard's hands come up, and the spidery words of magic begin to form on his lips. Before he can finish his spell, you attack, unwilling to take a chance on finding yourself a stone statue. Tell Lord Patrick to turn to encounter table on page 153 and run encounter 16. All right. Oh, nice. All right. So, encounter 16. We are going to mess this wizard up. He has 38 hit points. The wizard attacks with lightning bolt spells that do 9 damage. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Good, good to know. Okay, so it said that we attacked first, which is nice. Lord Erican. Well, first, Clem is just going to run up and try to club the dude. Clem gets a 13 and a 15. 13, 15 is a hit, and he does 6 flail damage. 6. Why can't I write a 6 here? Ah, <laughs> uh, he has 38 hit points. That's a lot. All right, then Lord Ariakin. He could do 3 damage with the staff. He has a staff of striking that does 6 damage, or I could do a spell. The dude is trying to cast something. Do I have, like, a silence? Confusion. All right, I feel like i got to figure out what these spells do. What does confusion do again? Where are you? There's a fourth level. Causes the entire enemy party to become confused and miss one combat turn. I mean, I like that idea. I'm going to do that. Okay, let's see if uh, my confusion spell works. 15 to attack, 13 to miss. 15, 13 is a miss. Doggone it. Waste of a spell. That sucks. <laughs> All right, uh, Gnarl. What are you going to do, Gnarl? God, just go up and claw this dude. Four and seven. So let's see, four and seven is a hit. He claws him for five damage. That's 11 damage he's taken total so far. All right, now the wizard. Oh, I wish that confusion would have lasted or worked. Attacks for nine, defend for three. And that's a miss. So a lightning bolt comes streaking across, narrowly missing Clem as he just beats him with his flail. Nice, okay. Uh, now it's Clem's turn. 13 and 20. So 13 attack, 20 defense is a special. We've been getting a lot of specials lately. Let's find out what this one is. Wait, where are the specials? Here we go. Specials for Lord Patrick. Oh, we got to do specials for Lord Ariakin. Uh, and we already did the potion. We did weapons you're using slips from your fingers. We did the amulet on the ground. Who has that amulet? Did we do that? Because I don't see it. All right. You find an amulet on the ground. It causes you to do double damage on your next successful attack. Oh, I think we did do that. Because I, I seem to remember it was Jiren, I thought, had the amulet. But this is for Lord Arikin. Okay, so we have an amulet for double damage. So I'm going to give that... Um, that was Clem who just attacked. I'm going to give that amulet 
here to gnarl. Two times damage next attack. Okay, so that was Clem, Lord Erikan. He's going to... Uh, Hmm. I'm going to do a magic missile. Let me see what the damage on the magic missile is in case I hit this dude. It's tw what? Shoots darts of fire at one or more targets for a total of 12 hit points of damage. Oh my gosh. Okay. Please let me hit. 18 and 13. 18 and 13 is a hit. Sweet, that's 12 damage. Jeez. That's 23, and they only had like 18, I thought. Oh, 38. Okay, so he's still in the game. Gosh, that is a tough wizard. And now Gnarl. What are you going to do, Gnarl? Let's just claw this dude again, because he's almost dead. 19 and 12. 19 and 12, and that's a hit, and he has the amulet doing double damage, so that's 10 damage, so that's 33 damage, dude had 38. All right, here he goes, another lightning bolt, 17, 1, was that 17? That's a hit, oh my gosh, that does 9 damage, Ooh, ooh. you know what, Clem, you're going to take it. Hey, Anton, thanks for joining live, man. Well, Magic Missile always hits in the D&D &D game, but this is a little different. You know, we have to... These game books require you to roll for everything. He's going to take that damage, that, <laughs> that lightning bolt for nine. Uh, so what is that? That's three, that's 20 or 17 left. I think math... <laughs> Anyone want to double check my math? Okay. Now Clem is going to try to clobber him. 12 and 3 is a miss. Lord Erikan. He's going to try. He only needs. So 8, 7, 6, 5. He needs 5 damage. He's going to try to hit him with his dagger. Because I don't want to use all my spells yet. So 16 and 16. That's a hit. And that's 3. So that's 36 damage. Two more damage. Come on, Naro. Claw him. Four and ten. And that's a miss. Damn it. Damn you, Naro. Wizard lightning bolt. 13 and nine. That's a miss. Whew. Okay, come on, Clem. Let's finish this thing. 13 and 11. That's a two times hit. That's 12 damage. And that kills this annoying ass wizard. Great job. Okay, so if you lose all your hit points, turn to 149. If you defeat the wizard, pay, turn to page 34. Here we go, 34. Great job. Lord Arrigan. And now we're going back to Lord Patrick, who we left off at page... Oh, man. Page 70. I'm trying to write all this stuff down. I hang to the rules. That's right. Okay, so one guardsman remains. You look at him warily. Is he going to try to take you all in by himself? To your surprise, he sheds his uniform, coat, and hands it to you. I am in your debt. Until I have repaid it, I cannot return to the guards, he says, bowing his head. You don't want this man in your debt, but you understand that it's a matter of honor, and who understands honor more than you, a knight of Salamnia? You take the coat and put it on your back, um, I'm sorry, in your backpack, and agree to take him along until he has paid his debt. His name is Rory. He has the remaining number of hit points of the city guards up to seven. Rory does four points of damage with his short sword. Okay, so I'm going to add this in here. Rory. Guard. Which I clearly cannot spell. He does 
Let's see. He has seven hit points. And he does four damage with his short sword. Trying to mimic Sir Patrick. So let's go over to, or uh, sorry, uh, Braun from Lord Erican's stat block. Okay, that's nice. Subtract additional hit points if the guards as a group had fewer than seven. They didn't get hurt at all. Still curious about the tall stone wall, you all examine it. In no time, Doorknob finds a secret door. Go, Doorknob! Turn to page 89. Go, Doorknob. It's your birthday. All right, page 89. Let's pick back up with Lord Patrick. And he was at 34. And we get to see that super cool wizard again. Then <laughs> we just whipped his ass. The wizard crumbles into dust. On the grass at his side lies a wand that you immediately recognize as magical. Wand of lightning bolts. It has three charges that automatically do seven hit points of damage each time it's used. Automatically do seven damage. So you don't even have to roll for that. Well, that's awesome. So, we're going to give that... You know what I should have done was that scroll of Shocking Grasp. Alright, Wand of Lightning Bolts. And that was three charges, seven damage. I've got to remember to go back between these. All right, in the wizard's robes, you find a scroll case with a spell scroll. Turn to stone to flesh spell causes one statue to return to life. You now face the dilemma of choosing which statue to use it on. You look around the garden, trying to find one statue that will fit in with your party. Finally, you narrow the choice down to three. A cleric, turn to page 53. A thief, turn to page 59. A fighter, turn to page 30, or I'm sorry, 63. All right, people, do we want a thief, a cleric, or a fighter to join us? I'm, I'm inclined just based on the last encounter that we want another fighter. But what do you think? Do you guys have an opinion in the chat? Let me know. I'm going to take a sip of coffee because it's still morning here. Oh, gosh, that's good. Cleric, thief, or fighter. Who should I... You think a thief. They don't have a thief. That's a good point. Hmm. I've got a fighter. I've got a cleric. I do not have a thief. And I am looking for a hidden library. So maybe that's exactly what I need. That is a good idea. All right, Skull Cowboy. I'm going with the thief. Turn to page 59. All right, page 59. Now, let's pick back up with Lord Patrick. We left at 89. And here's the image that we see. Inside the wall is a badly overgrown vegetable garden. Obviously, no one has taken care of it for years, yet it continues to grow wild. Suddenly, from out of the corner of your eye, you catch movement. Turning to investigate, you just in time, uh, you're just in time to see a gully dwarf dive for a door concealed by growing plants. The door leads to some dirt stairs. You decide that this seems to be as good a way to go as any. You go down the stairs, then along a short passage to a door. As Doorknob starts to check the door, Jiren shrieks. She was leaning on the wall with one hand when suddenly her hand slid into a hole. She cries. There's something in there. And as she jerks her hand out, putting your own hand in, you pull out an amulet. As you hold the amulet in your hand, its center starts to shift and change like smoke. Suddenly it clears, and you see your opponent. Tell the Lord Arican reader that you can see him. From now on, at the beginning of each turn, he must tell you where he is. If at any time you are both in the same place in the temple, 
turn to page 150 at that time. Then tell the Lord Eric and Reader to turn to his page 147. Make note of both pages. Okay. So, I've got to uh, write this down or I'm going to forget. Okay. If we're in the same place, I turn to 150, he turns to 147. Okay, I think that is everything. 150, Lord Eric, and 147. Yep, that's right. Okay, Amulet of Seeing. Interesting. Open the door and turn to page 71. All right, let's go to 71. That is not 71. There we go. All right, let's go back to Lord Patrick. See what is happening on his side of the planet. Still in that cockatrice room. Now, we chose to do a thief, right? So here is the image that we're looking at here. Kind of fun. He's reading the scroll. Reading the words of magic from the scroll, you see the kender thief begin to read... The kender thief? They didn't say it was a kender. <laughs> I think I would have chose differently. The kender thief began to return to life. Kenders are notorious for their insatiable curiosity tall tale telling, and lack of respect for others' belongings. But they're natural thieves. Hey, Saki Sam, thanks for joining, man. The Kender's eyes blink once. Hi! Hey, that was interesting! I had heard that a cockatrice could turn you to stone. It wasn't much fun, though. I probably missed out on all kinds of fun. My name is Thuro. I ran in here because the storekeeper kept calling me a thief. I thought that one was really rude of him, and... You clamp your hand over his mouth and tell him that if he would like to come adventuring with you, he's welcome, but only if he minds his manners and does what you tell him. Thuro likes the idea of a new adventure and readily agrees. All right, we've got another little friend here. Kender Thief Thuro, T-H-U-R-O. Dang it. All right, how many hit points does he have? 14 hit points. And Thoreau does four points of damage with his hoop pack. However, because of his dexterity, he makes a second attack with a dagger that does three hit points of damage. Oh, that's cool. He makes a second attack. So he gets two attacks? That's awesome. How come my other doorknob doesn't get that? Okay, four damage hoop pack, three damage dagger. That is much better than my other door, uh, doorknob of a kender. Turn to page 69. Giggity. I would say that was a good page turn for Lord Eric. And, and thank you for the good suggestion, Skull Cowboy. Because uh, I think that might work out. All right, 71. And here is the image that we're looking at. Kitchen. As the door opens, a squeaking sound greets you. Walking in, you find yourself in the kitchen. It stinks of very, very old rotten food. Someone has ransacked it for a while for what they could. Oh, we are back here. Let's see. Uh, probably the gully doors. But now rats are everywhere. You aren't too concerned with the rats until seven of the giant variety come running out from behind an overturned table. The gleam in their eyes tells you that they're hungry and they think you're dinner. Tell Lord Eric and Reader to turn to the encounter table on page 150 and run encounter 16. Okay. Encounter 16. 
15, 16, seven giant rats. They have seven hit points, and the rats bite for a total of two points of damage. That is nothing. This should go relatively quickly, but the rats attack first. Five, six. So five to hit, six to defend, and that's a miss. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Rodents of extraordinary size. 14 and 19 is what Jorin is doing. 14 and 19 is a hit. She does four damage. They have seven hit points. Uh, four damage. Lord Patrick goes in to cut them down. 14 and five is a miss. Lord Patrick, you suck. And the doorknob of a Kender is going to use his hoop pack. 18 and 15. Come on. That's a miss. What is going on with these people? All right, the rats attack. A 15 and a 20. Eek. 15 and 20 is a miss. Sweet. Now, Jurin comes back in with her wooden club, and she's going to squish this rat once and for all. 18, 12. Uh, that's a hit. And she does five or six damage. They only had seven hit points. We already did four. That's ten. That kills them. The rats are done. The dishes are done, man. All right, we killed the rats. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Rat killer. If you lose all your hit points, <laughs> turn to 152. If you defeated the seven giant rats, turn to page 95. All right, 95 it is. Ninety-five. And we return to Lord Erigan. Yes. And we left it at 69. Here's the image for 69. I like some metal, yeah. More of a hair metal guy, but this is back in the day. Where is the temple? You wonder as you step out of the garden. You stand still, looking up and down the deserted street. Your eye is caught by a wall taller than the others you see. It has mystical carvings on it, and it seems to extend forever. Could this be it? You almost feel the dragon wand calling to you from beyond that wall, a wall that appears to have no gate. If you have someone with thieving abilities with you, it takes no time at all to find the hidden gate. Ah, oh, yes! Go cowboy! That was a great choice with that thief. If you don't have anyone who can easily find and open secret doors, you lose a turn while turning to find your way over the wall. If you lose your turn, tell Lord Patrick Reader to take two turns before it's your turn again to resume reading the next paragraph. Okay, well, it doesn't matter because I got over there. On the other side of the wall, you find a large courtyard in a state of severe decay. Beyond the tumbled stone, you see a large, fragile-looking building with a pillar in front, in the front entrance that has dragons carved over the top. This is it, the Temple of the Dragon. If you want to go into the building, turn to page 43. If you'd rather explore around the outside first, turn to page 54. All right, are we going to explore the outside or are we going to go right in? I would never have even thought to explore the outside of the temple until they actually gave me a choice to do so. So I'm inclined just to go in. What do you guys think? Go in or explore outside. Oh, man. I need this coffee. Oy. All right. Saki Sam doesn't know. Skull Cowboy wants to explore the outside. Well, you haven't let me down yet, Skull, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your uh, advice here. Let's turn to page 54 to explore the outside. Indiana Jones would just go in. So 54. All right. Back with Lord Patrick and his crew. 95. Here's the image. As you finish off the giant rats, a swarm of gully dwarves rushes in, jabbering something about you being an honored guest. <laughs> it soon becomes very clear. The kitchen is quickly set up as a banquet hall when the giant rats is their main course. You try to excuse yourself, but the leader of the gully dwarves won't hear of it. At last, you convince him you must be on your way. Finally, between disgusting mouthfuls, the leader presents you with a potion. 
Potion of Healing. It will heal all members of your party back to full strength. However, if the potion is used during a battle, it must be used during the first combat turn. That's awesome. That's amazing. All right, hold on. I got to write that down. I'm going to give that to my cleric. And that's full healing for everyone. Oh, dude, that's dope. Thanking the gully doors for their hospitality, you leave while you still have your lunch and hurry on your way. If you haven't been to the weapons room yet, turn to page 7. If you've already been to the weapons room, turn to page 28. I don't remember the weapons room. Let me... I'm not showing a 61. Hmm. Um, Sake Sam, make sure you refresh your browser that you're looking at this on because you may be behind in the stream, just to let you know. All right, let's see. You've already been to the weapons room. I haven't been there. All right, 61. At least I don't remember last time. Do you guys, it was two weeks ago, so no, I was not there. All right, 61. Let's see here. We are back with Lord Ariakin. They have five party members right now. They're doing a really good job, actually. 54. Here's what they see. It looks like they're right on the tail of the heroes, actually. At the back of the temple, you find a vegetable garden. It has long since gone wild, but vegetables are still growing among the weeds. Through the garden winds a path without a single weed growing on it and obviously still in use. It leads to the temple. Following the path, you come to a cellar door. A simple padlock takes only a moment to break. Descending the stairs, you find a narrow passageway leading to another stairway. Hurrying toward it, you stumble over something on the ground. Bending down, you pick up an amulet. As you hold the stone in your hand, its color begins to swirl. You stare, mesmerized, until suddenly you can see it swirling the night you saw that morning on the griffin accompanied by a woman and a kender. Tell Lord Patrick, reader, that you can see him. From now on, he must tell you where he's at the beginning of each turn. If at any time you're both in the temple in the same chamber, turn to page 147. Then tell Lord Patrick to turn to his page 150 and run the rival encounter. Make note of both pages. You climb the second stairway and push open a door. 127. He's going to run into me! Oh, man! 127. Oh no, he's in a totally different room. All right, 127. So that was clearly the same place in the garden, but for whatever reason, yeah, it's a trap. <laughs> All right, we're back with Lord Patrick in the weapons room with the candlestick. Killing Lord Mu or Colonel Mustard. All right, here we go. Weapons room. The room you enter is obviously the weaponry, with a stairway on the far side leading up. In the middle of the floor sits a locked chest. Doorknob drops to his knees in front of the lock, but when he touches the chest, a fist appears out of the side of it and hits him in the head for one hit point of <laughs> damage. <laughs> well, his bracers of defense actually say minus two damage per turn, and so that's going to apply to that. Furthermore, Doorknob's hand is now stuck in, or stuck to the chest. I'm hungry, <laughs> the voice cries. Startled, you realize that it's the chest that's talking. If we feed you, will you let us go, friend? If you feed me enough, I will. And if it's generous enough, I might even tell you something. From your packs, you each take out some provisions. <laughs> is this enough? You ask as the chest chews up your dinner. It burps, blur, then releases doorknob. No. Now, what did you want to tell us, you persist? I just wanted to tell you that you're in big trouble. What kind of big trouble, you demand, but the chest just laughs. <laughs> if you haven't already been there, do you want to go to the kitchen? Turn to page 61. Or do you want to go to the stairs? Turn to page 28. Well, we were just at the kitchen, so let's go to the stairs. That's 28. <laughs> Fucking mimic. I was, for a minute, I thought I was going to be like, give me cookies. Or, or 
feed me, Seymour. That would have been awesome if he did that. 28. That's funny. All right, we are back with Lord Ariken. Let's see what nonsense he is getting into. We left off at 127. This is what he sees. Altar Room. You enter a rubble-strewn chamber that once was used for worship. Come on, let's move on, you tell your companions. But then you de your detect magic spell shows that there's something magical in the rubble of the altar. Searching, you find a chunk of marble with a small niche carved into it. Inside is a gem of spell turning. It will negate two spells after an enemy successfully casts the spell. Tell him that it has failed. You will take no damage, and the enemy will not gain any benefits. That's awesome! All right, gem of spell turning. Um, just because I'm running out of room here. Oh, there we go. That's great. I'm going to save that for the battle between Lord Patrick and Lord Arrigan. All right, there are three doors off of the altar room, as well as the stairway. So, listen up here, people. <laughs> Thanks, MS. And you're awesome, too. Thanks for, uh, even if you're just stopping in. Appreciate it. All right, we can go up to the next floor. Or we can stay on this floor and go to the vestry, the waiting room, or the audience chamber. Okay, so here are our choices. Go to the next floor go to the vestry, go to the waiting room, or go to the audience chamber. Now, we're looking for the Dragon Wand of Kryn, which is supposed to be in this library. Presumably, we're in the building. We just need to get to the actual Dragon Wand. So, next floor, vestry, waiting room, or audience chamber. I don't even know what a vestry is, if I'm being honest. Oh, God. This coffee is bringing me back alive. No choices? No, no opinions? I'll tell you that I'm inclined to go to the next floor. So, let's do that. 49. Next floor, 49. All right. 49, and I think that was a good choice. Let's go back to Lord Patrick and see what he's doing. He's at 28. Here is what he sees right there. Waiting room. The waiting room is empty, except for the stairway going down and a large puddle in the middle of the floor. The puddle is so large that it covers most of the floor from wall to wall. Intrigued, you start to step toward the puddle, followed by your companions, when something about the puddle causes you to come to a quick halt. Your companions fail to notice your sudden stop and nearly knock you into the puddle. Pointing at it, you explain that it's gray ooze, a deadly, animated substance able to eat through metal. If you want to fight the gray ooze, turn to page 80. If you've just come up the stairs and you want to go back down, turn to page 73. If you haven't been to the vestry and want to go there now, turn to 78. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm not going to step on that skull cowboy. And I'm not even sure I want to fight it. Like, each of my guys have already taken damage. I need to get to the library. But here's the choice. Do I go to the vestry, which you guys have already clarified is where vestments are kept? Or where vests are kept. <laughs> or do I just uh, go back down? I don't want to go back down. All right, Skull. Let's do the vestry. Let's do it. Turn to page 78. I could have been in the same room as Lord uh, Ariakin if I chose differently. 78. We're going to the vestry. Now, let's pick up with Lord Ariakin, who went up to the next floor. And I got a feeling. Oh, hold on. I just got a message here. Okay. Forty-nine. 
And this is what we're looking at. We did it. We did it. The library. You wonder how many more floors there are in the temple as you climb up the stairs. Is the dragon wand somewhere on this floor? Are you getting close to the end of your adventure? You hope so. You can hardly wait to go to Sanction and show Kitiara who's the new boss. But first, the dragon wand. The stairs have led into a library. The walls are lined with shelves full of books and scrolls. There must be a wealth of information on ancient times and powerful magic here. It's too bad you don't have time to take advantage of all this. Maybe later, when you've taken your place as ruler of Kryn, as your father had intended you to be, you can come back here and study. On a table, in the middle of the room, are several open scrolls. You give them a casual glance as you head for the door on the other side, but then your curiosity gets the better of you. You stop to take a closer look at the scrolls. This must be before he went and uh, started the Knights of Tachesis. Turn to page 58. All right, 58. He's going to start looking at arcane scrolls. Let's pick back up and see what the vestry is all about with Lord Patrick. And uh, I don't think it's going to be a good thing because we got this image here. The vestry was the room that the clerics used to dress in their garments they wore for the ceremonies and services. Now the room is scattered with rags and broken furniture. Among the mess stands three draconians. They're tossing things around in drunken abandon. Tell the Lord Eric and Reader to turn the encounter table on page 150 and run encounter 18. All right, we're finding some draconians, people. 18, 18. Three draconians. Draconian claws do a total of seven hit points of damage. All right, so... They attack. 15, my defense is 17. 15 and 17 is a miss. Sweet. All right, Jiren, what do you got? You got a potion of healing. You got a wooden club. You got hold person. Let's do hold person. 18 and 18. 18 and 18 is a miss. Oh, you freaking turd. Ugh. Ugh. Let me double check something really quick. Hold person. Stop one enemy from attacking for two combat turns. The enemy chooses who is affected by the spell. Bah. Okay. Well, that sucked. Uh, Lord Patrick. Cut him down, man. 14 and 15. 14 and 15 is a miss. You freaking turd. All right. Doorknob uh, is going to... Oh, you know what? He is going to do his taunt, and it negates the first 2x. So his turn is to taunt the <laughs> Draconians. Any of you have any good uh, Draconian taunts, by the way? Hey, Bidus, thanks for joining live. we got Dragon High Lords up in this his house. Pretty awesome. Anton and Lord and uh, Byrtus are Dragon High Lords. Okay, so that was his turn. Now it's their turn. They attack me for a 3, and I defended a 19. And that's a hit. Those bastards. They do seven damage. All right. All right. That hurt. <laughs> that hurt a lot. Oh, I forgot. I have uh, Roy. Rory, the guard. All right. Well, I'm going to remember this time. He was cowering at the sight of the Draconians, terrified. All right, Rory, you're attacking first. Nine and six is a miss. Rory, you are useless. All right, Jiren, let's see what you got. Let's hit him with your wooden club. 15 and 13. It's a miss. What is wrong with these people? We need a Benny Hill music playing. Lord Patrick gets two attacks this round. 19, 18 is a hit. And the second is 17, 2 is a special. Okay, so the hit does seven damage. And they have 19 hit points. And the special... What is our special? See, we did the amulet. We did the hit points. A swarm of ants crawl up your enemy's legs, causing them to miss the next combat turn. 
That's awesome. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Skull Cowboy. <laughs> um, all right. That's awesome. So, ants are attacking on my defense. That's pretty funny. So, normally, um, let's see, that was Lord Patrick, now it's Doorknob. So, Doorknob is going to use his hoop pack. Attacks at three, they defend at 20, and that is a miss. And uh, it's their turn, but they have ants all over them, so they miss their turn. Now, we go back to Rory. Let's see if this guard can redeem himself. A six and a 17. Six and a 17 is a miss. This guy is useless. All right, Jiren. Wooden club. Let's do it. Nine, 18. 918 is a hit, finally. That's six damage. Um, that's 13 damage totals now. And they have 19. So we're getting there. We got six more damage to do. Lord Patrick, let's do this. Six, nine. That's a miss. Oh, All right, I have to do three damage. A hoop pack does four damage. So come on, Doornab, you could do this. Two, seven. That's a hit. All right. Doorknob ran up with his hoop pack and just hit him in their face, killing them. They turned to stone and all is well in the world. All right. Good job. Took a little longer than I'd like, but if you lose all your hit points, turn to 152. If you defeat the three draconians, you have two choices up the stairs or to the waiting room. Now I know as the person running both sides here that, uh, up the stairs is the library. At least I'm assuming it's the same place. The waiting room we've never been in, but we want to get to the library. And we know that Lord Erikan's in the library. So should we should we do the library? Should we go up the stairs or should we go to the waiting room? What do you guys think? No, wait a second, because we already went upstairs and we didn't see the, the library. We saw the Grey Ooze with Lord Patrick. So who knows? What do you guys think? Waiting room or stairs? I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. Sake Sam is going to pull out some meat. <laughs> All right, should we do the stairs? It might be a showdown. We might be able to mess everyone up. All right, whatever. Let's do the stairs. 85. 85. Bitus, I'm sorry. You're a little late. I already chose 85. And 85 is the library. So, since we're both in the library, remember we had to do 150 or 147, depending on, uh, you know, which character we're doing. So, I'm marking down 85, if I survive this, we'll pick up there, but I'm going to go to page 150 because we're going to have an encounter with Lord Ariakin. Come on, dude, where are you? 150, rival encounter! Dun, dun, dun. And he goes to 147. 147. Rival encounter. All right, here's the image for the rival encounter. We see each other across the library. He's studying scrolls, and I'm just walking up, talking about that nasty gray ooze. Facing your opponent, you see a man much like yourself, the fire of ambition burning in his eyes. But you don't see another fire, the desire for revenge that burns in your heart. He looks like a solemn man, but then all Knights of Salamnia are like that. Always running around, doing good deeds, living and dying by some stupid code. You're glad you aren't like that. Why don't we talk about the Dragon Wand, Lord Patrick says. You just laugh in his face and start preparing your weapons. You just want to finish what you need to do to get the Dragon Wand. Is this really what you want? Lord Patrick sighs in resignation, his hands going toward his own weapon. I don't share. To emphasize your point, you leap forward to attack. Your companions follow close behind. You haven't had time to prepare your spells. You will have to wait until the next combat turn to use any magic. All right, that was his. Let's see what Lord Patrick, if it's the same thing or not. As you face your opponent, you see a young man much like yourself, as ambitious as you are. The only real difference is to what lengths you would go to to get what you want, to get where you want to go. The measure and the code of the Knights of Salamnia are what stop you. 
Why don't we talk about this? You say to the dragon high lord. He merely laughs and draws his weapon. You make one more attempt to reason with him. Is this what you really want? You ask deliberately. I don't share, Lord Erican replies. With a smile, he springs to the attack. Because you try to reason with him, you lose the first attack in this instance. However, you may have first attack in all subsequent combat turns. Any spell casters will not have their spell components ready until the second combat turn. Okay, people, this is it. Oh, boy. Oh, mama. We are going to battle each other. And I'm going to use the... Mm. Oh, boy. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter because it's all the same. 147. I know the page to turn to. Okay, so it's the evil guys that are going first. So I'm going to start with evil guys. Clem, I can't use any spells this first round. So, um, and the defenders always get to say where the damage goes, right? So if Clem attacks Doorknob, he doesn't necessarily do damage to Doorknob. He's just attacking the good guys, and the good guys are just attacking the bad guys. So this is going to be interesting because I'm the one running both of them, but we'll see how this goes. Clem is going to attack the good guys. 12 and 4. 12 and 4 is a hit. He does 6 flail damage. The good guys are so screwed. You know what? I have that stupid Rory guard. He takes it. So, Rory has one out of his seven hit points because he took the full six damage. <laughs> ah, see? It's good to have stupid people around. All right, Lord Arikin. He can't use any magic spells, but he does have his scroll. So, and he has the Wand of Lightning Bolts. Oh, dude, he's using a Wand of Lightning Bolts. <laughs> For sure. I'm going to kill the good guys in this first turn. Just watch. All right, here we go. Six and 14. Six and 14 is a special. All right. Um, a pack of rats runs across your enemy's path, causing them to miss their next combat turn. Oh, snap. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> the lightning bolt wand did not hit, but they got a special attack. So, they get an extra round, which is awesome. All right, Gnarl is going to... We got to pull out all the stops on this one. He can do five damage with his claws, or he can do seven damage with his magic stone. Or I can give four temporary hit points to everyone with aid. I'm going to use my magic stone. Twelve and nine. It's always the rats. That's a hit. So, I used the magic stone. It did seven damage. We're going to kill off Rory the guard. <laughs> so, Rory is no longer. Sorry, Rory. You suck. Um, oh, wait. You know what? I might be able to bring him back, so I'm just going to put it at zero. Because I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen next, you know? I just don't want to delete them all, all together. All right, now we get an extra turn because rats are sc <laughs> just running across their feet. Clem goes up to club the good guys. Four and four is a hit. So he does six damage. Where is he going to do six damage? Oh, boy. I could have it be four damage if he hit him. Let's do that. All right, Lord Erican, you can do spells now. <laughs> Should I just go crazy? Just do a fireball? <laughs> Let me read fireball really quick. I want to make sure that it doesn't get me. You know what I mean? Um... Fireball creates a large ball of fire that does 15 points of damage, and that's it. All right. I'm going to do a fireball. Screw it. I'm trying to kill these guys, even though these guys are me. This is rough. 14 and 5. 14 and 5 is a miss! Ah! How does that happen? <laughs> Doggone it. All right. All right. Um, gnarl. What's Gnarl going to do? He already did Magic Stone. 
I'm just gonna claw someone. 10 and 14. 10 and 14 is a hit. He does five damage to someone. Oh boy. To Jiren. I know it's messed up, Sake. It must have gone like down into the uh, downstairs or something. Really bad aim, Lord Eric. Uh, okay, now it's the good guy's turn. And they are in dire straits here. She has a ring of frost damage with two charges. She's going to use one. Or should I heal? No. I could do hold enemy. Hold person. Did I already use that? I thought I already tried to use that and I didn't succeed in it. I think I did try to use that and I didn't succeed in that. Um, <sighs> that's true, Skull Cowboy. Ring of Frost. I'm going to use a, a thing of Ring of Frost for 10 damage. 17 and 12. 17 and 12 is a zero. That's a miss. Oh my gosh. All right, Lord Patrick. This is the actual first round you get to go so that's only one attack you have the amulet of seeing and that's it all right so attack 11 and 8 11 and 8 is a miss oh my gosh these good guys are gonna get killed doorknob is gonna taunt he's gonna taunt lord eric and that's right um Okay, so now it's Clem's turn. Clem has oil of healing. He doesn't need it. He's going to attack. Seven and two. Seven and two is a hit. That's six damage. Oh my gosh, these guys are not in a good place. Well, you got to remember, Bytus, that this isn't D&D &D rolling, right? I'm just doing a random table. So a high number does not mean... Um, you're going to hit. It, it's totally up to the combat table. Uh, so it's randomized. Let's see. Gosh, I'm going to have it be him. Six damage, that's a lot. Okay, Lord Ariakin, he has magic. He is going to use... He's going to use Cloud Kill. What does Cloud Kill do? A deadly poisonous gas appears over your enemies, causing 20 hit points of damage. Oh, God, he's going to kill all of them. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> if he hits, if he hits, here we go. 16, 10. 16, 10 is a miss. You <laughs> Son of a... Oh, that would have killed... That would have killed one of them for sure. Oh, dude, that's awesome. All right, Gnarl, what are you going to do, Gnarl? Resist fire, aid, cause light wounds for four damage or claws. He's going to use his claws. 16. 11. 16. 11. Is a miss. Okay, we'll go back to the good guys here. I'm going to turn to the good guys for a little while. You can see how hurt they are. <laughs> already she's gonna try to use the ring of frost again <laughs> it's just the way they have this sake sam so eight and thirteen eight and thirteen is a miss damn it that was the second charge that she missed with i am sucking at this all right bite you're right my rolls suck lord patrick all you can do is attack but you get two attacks this round so the first attack is eight and two eight and two is a special So we just did swarm rounds. You trip a trap and spikes shoot up out of the ground doing nine points of damage to you and your party. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> nine damage. No one can take nine damage. All right, I'll take nine damage. Ugh. Is that right? Oh, man, we're going to die. And I can't use that potion of healing unless it's at the very beginning of the turn. I mean, uh, the, the combat encounter. Oh, I'm so screwed. I am so screwed. Ugh. 
All right. Um, stupid Lord Patrick. Well, the Lord, the bracers only go to doorknob, unfortunately. So 16 and 5 is his second attack. And that's a hit. So he finally actually hits someone with 7 damage plus 2 damage. So 9 damage? Why does it say 7 damage plus 2 damage? I can't remember. Is the 2 damage the first hit? Oh, come on, you turd. All right, weapon, the true blade, but it will also do an extra two hit points of damage every first successful strike of each battle. Okay, well, this is not the first... Well, actually, this is the first successful strike because it's the first time he's hitting anyone. So that's nine damage. Who is he doing nine to? Uh, I mean, logically, I think Lord Erican would just take that. Nine damage. Uh, yeah, I think he's going to do that. Okay. Now, Doorknob. He taunted last turn. So this time he is going to... He could do six damage if he hits with both of his daggers. So he's going to throw two daggers. <laughs> Lord bastard. Right here, first attack is eight and 16. Eight and 16 is a miss. The second dagger is 10 and 19. 10 and 19 is a miss. What the hell is going on? So he only has four daggers left for this encounter. That's ridiculous. All right, Clem. He's just going to... Oh, you know what? I forgot that the bad guys have two extra characters. They have the thief and the guard that could have been attacking. So let's start with them. Let's start with the guard. Brawn is with them. He doesn't have very many hit points left. But 10... And 13. So he attacks for 10. Defense is 13. It's a hit. He does 5 short sword damage. Oh boy. Oh boy. I can make that 3 here. This is going to be rough, dude. These, it, it's, this is inevitable, I think. I don't think there's any way to not die. <laughs> Alright. Thoreau, the Kender Thief, attacks and if we'll remember he has a hoop pack and dagger and he does two attacks so the hoop pack is four damage let's see if he hits with that two and four he does so he does four damage oh boy we'll have it be to her oh shit this is so bad i'm gonna have to have them do cure light wounds and then the dagger attack, 19 and 5, is a miss. Okay, now it's Clem's turn. Clem is a 7 and a 19. That's a miss. Lord Ariakin, he is going to use his Wand of Lightning Bolts. He already used one, so he has two left. This is going to be one left after he uses this one. He attacks for 15. And five. Oh wait, the wand of lightning bolts automatically hit, didn't it? I'm pretty sure it did. 29, 127. I gotta find the page where I found the lightning bolt. I can't remember. Nope. 54? Or 69. Maybe it was 69. Sorry, guys. Just give me a second here. Nope, 54. These pages are turning in big chunks. It's not 54 either. Jeez, I must have found that a while ago. 34 or 83. So 34. There it is. That automatically do seven points of damage each time it's used. Okay, so I don't have to roll to hit that. So seven damage. Oh, shit. All right. Oh, boy. So he's got one charge left in that. Gnarl is going to... 
I just use claws. That does more damage. Yeah, claws. So 15 and 16 is a hit. That's five damage. Oh, shit. I can make it three if it's against him. Oh, God, this is rough. These guys are going to die. There's just no way around it. I'm a little sad, too, because I like Knights of Selenia. But Lord Arikin has to live because he's going to make the Knights of Tequesa, So This does seem like way off balance, right? These bad guys are just much better equipped, it seems. And I don't know if that's just because of the randomness of the play or because they're meant to be that way. But either case, it is now the good guy's turn. Jiren is going to cast Cure Light Wounds and heal four wounds. Oh, gosh. Let's see. Lord Patrick. Did he get two attacks last turn? He did, so this time he gets one. Three and 18. So three and 18 is a hit, which is seven damage. Who is going to take the seven damage? You know what? We're going to have Brawn the guard take it, which kills him. Oh, no, it doesn't. So 11. That's four. So I think they did say the guards have to take the first damage. Um, I think that's intentionally to get rid of them. You know what I mean? Okay, so now doorknob. Let's do two more daggers. Nine and 19 is a special. These specials are not good. Let's see, we did the trip a trap. If you are attacking with a spell, it is nullified by outside forces. If you are attacking with a weapon, count as a normal hit. Sweet, okay. I take that. So the first dagger does three damage. That's gonna go to Brawn, so he has one. And the second dagger, which is 18 and three, is a hit. So that kills Brawn. All right, Brawn is dead. I'm actually gonna swap places with Brawn and Thuro. Okay, just so I don't have to scroll. And uh, now we are on Clem. Oh wait, let me mark off these daggers real quick. All right, Clem, what you got? You got a flail, let's use it. Kill, kill, kill. Seven and five. Seven and five is a miss. Lord Arikin, you got strengths. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, you got spells. But he also has that Wand of Lightning Bolt, which is seven automatic damage. So I'm going to use that. All right, who's going to take the seven? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Ah! <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Okay, at least that's used up, though. Now, Gnarl. What are you going to do, Gnarl? <sighs> Gnarl's just going to attack. Five damage is better than his magic spell. And they're not hurting, so they don't need temporary hit points or anything. So 20 and 11. 20 and 11 is 2x. Two two but remember, Doorknob Taunted, which negates the first 2x, which is awesome. Okay, so that does nothing. So it's a good thing to always taunt people. <laughs> always taunt first, as I always say. Abracadabra. Um, oh, I almost forgot about Thorough, the Kender Thief. He gets two attacks. Nine and five. That's a hit. So that's four Hupak damage. Ooh. I can make that two. Oh, all right. And the next is the dagger. It's nine and 17. And that's a miss. Now, Lord Patrick, you guys are so screwed. You're going to do cure light wounds because you need it. Um, to herself. 
Lord Patrick gets two attacks this round. 13, 13. It's a miss, which sucks. And 19 and 20 is a hit. So that's seven damage. Who takes it? It's going to be the Kender. Wow. That's half his hit points. They've got to get rid of that Kender. Doorknob is going to attack with his last two daggers. Seven and eight. Seven and eight is a special. Is it going to be a good one? Or is it going to be a bad one? Let's see. You think you hear your mother calling? You mixed your nest, miss your next combat turn. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's the stupidest thing I ever heard in my life. All right, doorknob misses his next combat turn because he's a freaking doorknob and he thinks his mom is calling him. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. So his next combat turn means because he was doing daggers, so he gets two attacks. Or does that mean the next combat turn is the next combat turn? So then his second attack for this combat turn is 18 and 8. As a hit. So at least he does that. And he threw the other dagger, even though he got the special. So who takes the three damage? That's going to be the Kender. Whoa, what just happened? What is going on? What the hell is going on? What just happened? Well, that was zero. I don't understand what's happening. It's not letting me, is there a character limit or something that I missed? All right, let's get rid of brawn and see if that helps. Because that was the case. Maybe there's a character limit. Yep, I think that's what it was. I'm going to have to fix that later. Kendra definitely have ADD, so I guess it makes sense of all the strange things that happen in this, you know what I mean? Okay. Now, they're, it's their turn now, the bad guys. Lord Ariakin. Uh Clem is going to try to attack. 14 and 3. So 14 and 3 is a special... That's, this is their special table. Let's see. They did the rats running across your enemy's path, causing them to miss their next combat turn. So the next one is all spells used in this battle will automatically hit. Oh boy. Okay. That was a good special, Clem. Lord Ariakin. Any spell you want to use is going to automatically hit. So what's the most? What's Flame Sphere? We gotta do some damage here. Flame Sphere. Where are you? Creates a rolling ball of flame that does nine points of damage. Well, that is not that great. Stinking Cloud. Creates a stinking cloud that causes two enemies of your choice to become so nauseated they miss the next two combat turns. Whoa! That's awesome. Haste. Allows everyone in your party to take one extra attack each combat turn for the entire battle. Yeah. That's... That's... Ugh. Okay, do I want to do damage with this or do I want to have automatic success with my haste? What's Wall of Fire before I choose? Where is Wall of Fire? That's a fourth level spell. Creates a wall of fire that does eight points of damage the first combat turn. Every combat turn thereafter, for the rest of the battle, the wall will do an additional eight damage for every successful strike. This spell acts as a second weapon. But if any other spell is cast, the wall will disappear. So that may not be great. Magic Missile does 12 damage. So should I automatically hit with Magic Missile? For 12 damage, and then next turn do haste? Or should I just auto do haste? Haste seems like... Alright, Sake Sam, we're going to do haste. Skull Cowboy, it's haste. So everyone 
one extra t- everyone in your party take one extra attack each combat turn for the entire battle. Okay. So that's on his casting haste will affect Gnarl and Thuro. Because he just went. So Gnarl, he can have an automatic success. He's going to do temporary four hit points for Thuro. Because Thuro's doing two damage. So eight. I mean, he gets two attacks no matter what. So he's going to have three attacks now. And then his second attack is going to be oh man five damage for claws five eight is a hit so that's five damage to oh shit oh gosh I can make that three or five for three, so that's a two. Holy cow, these guys are gonna get annihilated. All right, the Kender gets three attacks. So the Hoopak is the first. Three and one. That's a hit. So that's four damage. Oh my gosh. They're gonna all die from the Kender. The second is gonna be a Hoopak. It's 20 and 13 is a miss. And the third is the dagger, 20 and 15, is a hit. That's three damage. Oh my gosh, the Kender almost killed everyone. Okay, (laughs) now we know Doorknob does not get his attack this turn because... Sorry, wrong frame. Um, He heard his mom calling. So Jurin has got to use... He can offset damage attacks, so... I really like giving him. I love that Bracer of Defense. Okay, Lord Patrick, you get one attack this turn. 19 and 1 is a special. Oh, be a good special. Come on, be a good special. Let's see. Where's the mom? Okay, so the next one is all spells used in this battle will work automatically. Okay, that's awesome. So both sides... What? I can't remember if I had that for the other guy. I don't think I did. It was for that turn that Clem did, right? Let me look at that special real quick. No. Each person has automatic hits for all of their spells on both teams. Okay, that was a good one, Lord Patrick. Doorknob doesn't get his turn. We go back to the bad guys. All right, we're going to lead with Thorough this time. He's got his two attacks. 14 and 6. 14 and 6 is a 2x. That's 8 damage. Oh my gosh. Someone's going to die. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Ah! (laughs) I'm sorry, doorknob. I need the heals. Oh my gosh. Doorknob is dead. Oh. Killed by another Kender. The humanity. So 14 and 6 is his second attack. Which is a 2x. Oh my gosh, that's 6 damage. (gasps) Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The Kender just killed two people. Oh. Now Clem steps up. 18 and 6. 18 and 6 is a hit. That's 6 damage. Party wipe. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Okay. He was at 147. Wow. They just sweeped the room. If you lose all your hit points, turn to 149. If you defeat Lord Patrick... Return to the page you were at and go on. Good luck finding the dragon wand. Wow. Okay. So we return here. Let's find out really quick before we go back to him what happens at the end of this. Good guys had no chance. That's for sure. If you lose all your hit points, turn to 152. 
here it is. Rest in peace, Lord Patrick. You have failed. Your ambitions have died with you, as has your family line. Damn, they gotta just dig that knife in and twist it. You were the last member of your family. Their final hope of someday seeing one of their blood become the Grand Master of the Knights of Salamnia. Even worse, you have failed your mission. The only thing you have to be thankful for as your spirit departs is that you died in the line of duty. Tell the Lord Arican reader that your party has perished and is no longer a threat to his goal of finding the Dragon Wand. He should continue his search for the wand. <laughs> okay. One character down. One character left. Wow. I did not see that coming. Let me take a sip of coffee and just reflect for a minute. Two of my party was killed by a kender. That is humiliating. Wow. That was just brutal. Okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, let's continue with <laughs> Lord Ariakan. Holy shit. So we left at 58. So this is where we left. Picking up the first scroll, you see that it's a sleep spell. It will put up to three persons to sleep for one combat turn. Nice. Okay. Hold on. Oh, hold on a second. The second scroll is a fireball spell. It will do 15 hit points of damage. These spells are definitely worth your second look. You wonder how they managed to remain here untouched for so long, unless someone has been here recently. Whatever the reason, you're thankful that you found them. Storing them away in your scroll case, you hear a sound moving toward the library. Okay, so, fireball spell and sleep spell. I don't have this anymore. Um, that's 15. And sleep is three people for one combat turn. <laughs> Bite us. Um, I feel like you're hate watching at this point. <laughs> okay, I got the two scrolls. If you wanna stay, if you stay to see what it is, the sound moving toward me in the library, turn to 68. If you retreat back down the stairs, turn to page 23. Do I stay or do I go? What do you guys think? I'm inclined to stay. I'm not in that bad a shape. So, plus I got some spells that I can use, some scrolls I can use. You know what? Sake Sam wants me to go. I, I think I can take him, whatever it is. All right, you're the only one saying anything, so I guess I'll go. 23. 23. This is 23. You meant stay. <laughs> should I stay or should I go? All right, just as you reach the head of the stairs, the door bursts open and in come four big, tough-looking men. Brigands. Stealing yourself as you, uh, you ask in a friendly manner, Hello there. What can we do for you? You can't do anything for us. Oh, you can't do anything for us, but we're going to rearrange their face for you, the biggest and meanest says. Wait a minute now. What have I ever done to make you want to do that? You ask, taking a step back while you prepare to fight. We're not mad at you. Someone else is. And that someone pays well. The brigand finishes by drawing his weapon. The others follow suit. Tell the Lord Patrick Reader to turn to the encounter table on page 153 and run encounter one. That was page 23. So encounter one. Brigands. Total hit points 25. Oh, jeez. The brigands take four attacks each combat turn causing four points of damage each successful attacks. Wow! Uh, I might have to use that haste spell again, because that's a lot of attacks. 
Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so they attack first. Four attacks. The first one is 15 and 18. 15, 18 is a hit, and that's four damage. So we're going to do four damage to the Kender. Oh, that temporary hit points of four from before has expired. The aid that was cast, so he actually dies. So the Kender is no more. The second attack, 16 and 20, is a hit. That's four. Who takes four? You haven't taken any damage. And the third attack is three and 19. It's a hit, holy shit. So four. And the last attack is 18 and two. It's a hit, wow. These guys are not doing well. Um. Why couldn't uh, the good guys do that? <laughs> All right, first up here, we're going to do Clem, because the Kender's dead. He's going to use uh, his flail. 19 and 11. Oh, it's a miss. That's not good at all. Lord Patrick, should we do sleep, the scroll? Let's do sleep. Three people for one turn. We need to, because... That's three of the attacks, right? Okay. See if he hits it. Seven and 18. It's a miss. Oh no. And that was the end of that scroll. And that's the end of Thorough actually as well. Oh boy. Oh boy. I should have, <laughs> oh boy. Sorry, this is bugging me. I gotta fix that uppercase. All right, gnarl, 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 gnarl. Gosh, you just gotta do uh, claws, I guess. Two and twenty. So two and twenty is a hit. That's five damage. They have twenty-five, so they're down to twenty. Um. I'll just count up. So five, and then that's their turn. Now it's the bad guy's turn. Oh shit, so the first guy attacker, 18 and 11. 18 and 11 is a hit, so that's four damage. Oh man. The second is six and a one, that's a hit. Oh boy. The third is a four and a six, which is a miss. And the fourth is a one and a seven, and that's a miss. Okay, Clem, come on, man. One and a 16 is a two X. That's 12 damage. 17 damage taken so far. They are killing. Yeah, dude, these, these brutes are brutal for sure. Uh, Lord Erican is going to cast Haste because these guys are doing too good. So three and one is a hit. So Haste works. Everyone gets two attacks for the rest of the encounter. Gnarls, his first attack is going to be... He's going to do two attacks with the claws because they do the most. A 20 and a six is a miss. But the second one, two and seven, is a hit. So that's five damage. It's 22 total and they have 25. So three more, it's their turn. The first brute is 12 and nine. I think that was a 12, I hope it was. It was a hit. Dang, it's not good. Um, gotta do math in my head. The second is five and 18 is a miss. The third is 20 and 18 is a hit. Oh boy. And the fourth is eight and two. I bet this was the, the guard, right? I mean the uh, mayor. That dude is shady as hell. I bet the mayor sent these guys after us. 
Uh, what am I doing? Special. I bet it was the mayor. Let's see. Da. If you are attacking with a spell, it is nullified by outside forces. If you are attacking with a weapon, count it as a normal hit. Damn it. Damn it. Okay. Well, it hit for four, so... I think that was all four, right? I'm going to say that was all four, because I, th I think it was. Okay, next. We get two attacks each. Clem is going to attack twice. The first Clem attack is two and 15, which is a miss. The second Clem attack is 12 and 17. And that's a special. Oh my gosh. Okay, special table for Lord Ariken. You are struck by a lightning bolt from above, which does nine hit points of damage. Holy shit, that just killed Clem. Oh. <laughs> oh gosh. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm kind of in shock. That's messed up. Um, Lord Erikin gets two attacks. You got to burn these guys down. We're going to do magic missile. Well, you only need three. How many? 25. I only need to do three damage to him. My staff does three damage, so I'm, the first attack is going to be my staff. 19 and 5 is a miss. My second one is the same. 18 and 2 is a hit. That kills the brutes. That was a brutal damage. I mean, brutal fight. Holy crap. That was unbelievable. Okay. Whew. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my gosh, that was brutal. Um, okay, if you lose all your hit points, turn to 149. If you defeat the brigands, turn to 31. That was crazy. And same image, which terrifies me. Searching the bodies of the brigands, you find a riding order from the mayor. I knew it, that bastard. Sending these men after you. You don't think you've done anything to upset the mayor, but maybe that twice-damned knight of Salamnia told him something against you. Something to persuade him that you are an enemy. Right now, though, you don't have time to worry about it. You chuckle at the thought of telling the mayor that you were taking over the town. At first, it's just a crazy idea, but as you give it a little more consideration, you realize it has possibilities. Tarsus would be a good base of operations. In fact, this temple itself might make the perfect headquarters. Keeping the idea in mind, you continue on. 79. I have not yet found the dragon wand. 79. All right, 79 is the upper hall. And this is the image we've got. Upper hall. You're in the upper hall, part of which is a balcony overlooking a dark area below. From where you stand, you see two doors near the hand, near at hand. The other end of the hall, the balcony, is in darkness. The deep bone-chilling darkness warns of danger. You try to see what could be causing this feeling of danger but you see only what appears to be a railing. You decide that whatever is down there can wait forever if you have your way. Somewhere in these two rooms, you hope, is the dragon wand. If you enter the door across from you, turn to page 88. If you go to the door on the right, turn to page 99. All right, across from me or to the right? This is very much bite us like a Game of Thrones episode. It's just death, death, and more death. It's probably the use. All right, so the door across from me or the door to the right? I'm going to take a sip of while you guys think about it. That was so brutal. Oh, my gosh. Hmm. Go to the right or door across from me? I'm going to do the door across from me. 88. Private audience chamber. The room is plushly furnished. An ornate chair, almost like a throne, commands the center of the far wall. It is an attractive room, but you don't see anything of interest here. Turning to go, you see something green dripping from the ceiling above the door. It's green slime. The only way to fight green slime is to freeze or burn it. 
you have no way of doing either. If you have no way of doing either, you will be stuck there unless you sacrifice one party member to the green slime. While he is being consumed, you should be able to slip past. Unless you have a scroll of resurrection, your party member is gone for good. If you choose to sacrifice an ally, ally choose one. You suffer two hit points of damage, forcing the unwilling sacrifice into the slime. If you have a way of combating the green slime, tell Lord Patrick to turn to the encounter table. Okay, do I have anything that can be fire or freeze? I have burning hands. That's fire. I have wall of fire. Yeah, I have flaming sphere. Okay, so I'm going to fight this thing. And I only have two people anyway. So we're going to fight. Encounter number 18. Encounter number 18. This is bad. Yeah, and I have that fireball scroll. 18, 18. Green slime. It has 15 hit points. The green slime turns whatever it touches to slime. If a 2x or a asterisk results during its attack, consult the table again. If a asterisk results, one character has been turned into green slime. Oh. Green slime can be fought only with cold or fire. Well, one fireball would kill it. So let's hope I hit. Okay. So if it gets a 2x or an asterisk, consult the combat table again. If an asterisk results on the second one, the character has been turned into green slime. Okay, this is going to be rough. Holy hell. Okay, it attacks. 7 to 3 is a hit. It's not an asterisk, and it's not a 2x. It doesn't have any damage. I don't understand. So there's no damage if it hits unless it's an 2x or an asterisk. Weird. Okay. So then I'm going to use that fireball spell. Please let it hit. 10, 13. Is a hit. Sweet. Down goes the green slime. Down goes the green slime. Suck it. Great use of a scroll. Awesome. Now, what do we got? What are we doing now? If you defeat the green slime, if you've already been to the assistant high cleric's chambers, turn to 61. If not, turn to 99. Okay, well, I haven't been there, so 99. Ninety-nine. This is the image we've got. Assistant High Cleric's Chambers. The door is locked, but you manage to unlock it fairly quickly. Opening the door, you enter a completely empty room. One small window lets in a little light, otherwise the room is bare. Why would the door be locked in an empty room, you wonder? Looking around to see if there isn't something you're overlooking... Feeling frustrated, you turn to leave when a strong gust of wind whips through the room. As you blink, you find yourself standing in the middle of a comfortable sitting room. You face a large easy chair with a table and lamp next to it. In the chair sits a round-faced, friendly-looking man in cleric robes. You can see right through him to the tapestries... I'm sorry, to the... tapestried back of the chair. Welcome, welcome... The man says, gesturing for you to take a seat. It's been so long since I've had company. Sorry, but we don't have time to visit right now, you say, edging toward the door. Please stay. I've been so lonely. I'm sure that we could find something of interest to talk about. On second thought, maybe there is something you can tell us about. Do you know anything about the dragon wand? You ask, taking a chair. But of course, I helped make it. Ah, oh, shit. Cool. Turn to page 108. And we've got the same image. You help make it? You reply amazed. Who are you? I'm Brother Thomas. I was the assistant high cleric here. We led such a peaceful life until the War of the Dragons. Which War of the Dragons? You ask. There's been more than one? I've lost track of time. What about the dragon wand? You demand impatiently. 
During the war with dragons, the first war, we heard that the magic users were making the dragon orbs to help win the war. We decided to make the dragon wand as our way of helping. And just what does a dragon wand do? It was made to control dragons of the alignment of whomever possesses it. However, it will only control up to five dragons at one time. It's not as powerful as the dragon orbs, but then we didn't want to create something so strong that it would create an imbalance of power if it fell into the wrong hands. So you're telling me that a person of evil alignment can control five evil dragons if they're in range? That's right. We had meant for it to be used only by those of a good nature, but it didn't come out that way. He gives an ap apologetic shrug. Turn to page 118. All right, that's kind of cool. It's kind of like a weaker version of the dragon orb. I like that. All right, same image. The dragon wand is just the weapon you need to defeat Kitiara. Smiling gleefully, you ask Brother Thomas, Where is the dragon wand? Oh, the dragon has it, he replies in an offhand manner. D -d 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 dragon What dragon? you stammer. I'm sorry, but I must be off now. As the last word leaves Brother Thomas's lips, the same wind that brought him takes him away. You are once again standing in an empty room, empty but for the scroll case lying on the floor where his chair was. Cure serious wounds and hold person spell. All right. It will cure up to 10 hit points of damage. Hold on. I got to write that down. Cure serious wounds. And then the other scroll is hold person spell. It will stop an enemy from attacking for two combat turns. If used against Lord Patrick Reader, he has the choice of whatever member. Okay, so hold person spell, two turns. All right. So if you want to go to the other room, turn to page 88. If you've already been to the private audience chamber, turn to page 61. I don't remember what was the private audience chamber. Let me see, what was 88? Have I been to 88? Oh, I have. So was 88 the private audience? Yes, it was. Okay. So if you've already been to the private audience chamber, turn to page 61. 61 it is. This is the image. Looks like draconians to me. Upper hall. There seems to be only one place left to search. The balcony over the audience chamber where eerie darkness reigns. Moving cautiously along the balcony, you hand on the, your hand on the railing, you hear a faint rustling down below. Peering into the darkness, you can barely make out a group of winged reptilians moving about down there. You turn to your friends to caution them to silence. However, as you turn, you see four more Draconians appear out of the darkness behind your allies. The Draconians shout in challenge to you and dash forward to attack. The Draconians down the audience chamber, hearing them, fly up to join them. There's little room for maneuvering on the balcony, and maneuvering you must if you're to survive this attack. Encounter 153. Oh, I'm sorry. Encounter 11. On page 153. Encounter 11. Nine Draconians, total hit points 37. The Draconian attack does a total of 12 hit points of damage. Holy shit! Whoa! Okay, this is getting serious. Um, okay, they attack. 15, 1. Is a miss. Sweet. And then... Um, don't have haste anymore. I've got to do 15 damage to them. Or, hold on, I'm sorry. They have 37. I'm going to write that down. They have 37 hit points. What can I do to help myself? Um, if, I, if I do the Wall of Fire and it does 8 damage per turn, I can't do any other spells. So I don't want to do that. I have a Scroll of Shocking Grasp. 
I don't have any more haste. I've used them all. Armor. I need I need something, man. What does armor do? Let me look real quick. I need to start doing defensive spells real quick. Creates a magical armor that will absorb eight hit points of damage before disappearing. All right, I like that. I'm going to cast armor. So seven and ten works. So I have eight temporary hit points. And then Gnarl has already used aid. Resist fire, I don't think we need to worry about. Has hold person. I'm going to use hold person. Please work. Two and 19. I'm like shaking. I don't know if it's because I'm hungry. <laughs> this is freaking me out. It was a miss. Damn it. Shit. Okay, it's their turn. 12 and 13. Is 2x. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this might be a party wipe. That's 24 hit points. Oh. Um. I think that makes it 16 if I absorb. Oh, so 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 22, 23, 24. I think that's right. Wow, that's rough. I think that's right. You guys let me know. Um, that's their attack, which was terribly successful. Gnarl is going to use the Curious Serious Wounds scroll. Um... I've already just used armor. Oh gosh, I gotta do something crowd control. Wall of fire. Well, wall of fire is the one where it does eight damage initially, and then each turn, turn it does eight damage, but I can't do any other spells at that point. And so I'm not sure I want to do that. What is, let me see what bind does. Bind is second level. A magical rope appears and ties one of the opponents for one entire battle. That doesn't help me with this because they're all, you know, it's all a cumulative attack. Strength. Add one hit point of damage for each successful strike for every member of your party for one combat turn. Or two hit points of damage for each successful strike for one member of your party for the entire battle. Oh, man. I think that's, that's good. Flaming Sphere. Where is that? Fifth level. No, second level. Flaming Sphere, a rolling ball that does nine damage, works automatically. Oh, works automatically. So that's automatically nine damage. I like that. Flaming Sphere, nine damage. So they have 28 left by my count. Okay, Gnarl. You got nothing. You can cause serious wound or cause light wounds or cure light wounds or do five damage. We're gonna do five damage. 19, 17. 19, what the hell am I looking at? 19, 17 is a hit, and that's five damage. So that's 23 damage or hit points left. All right, they attack. Three. And 12. 3 and 12 is a special. Well, they're attacking me, so they don't get specials. And then um, Clem is dead. Lord Arikin. I need another. What does Stinking Cloud do again? Wall of Fire is good. It's 8 damage, but I, I want to do other spells. But I do have a Staff of Striking. Let me see what Stinking Cloud is first. Because I might do that Wall of Fire. Um, stinging Cloud level 2 creates a Stinging Cloud that causes two enemies of your choice to become so nauseated they miss the next two combat turns. I mean, that's pretty great. Not getting hit twice if it works. I'm going to do Stinging Cloud. That gives them no two next turns. 1 in 16 is a 2 times hit so they don't get an attack for two turns which basically means I get two extra attacks. 
So Gnarl is going to attack. Cure Light Wounds is a good idea for him. And now it would be the bad guys, but they missed that first turn, so it goes back to us. I'm going to do the Wall of Fire. 16 and 7. It's a miss. God damn it. And then I'm going to do another Cure Light. Well, I'm going to have to fight a dragon. I know that's coming. Because that's who has the dragon one, he said, right? So I'm just going to attack 4 and 15. Is a hit. And that's 5 more. So that's 18 hit points left. Now it would be their turn, but this is their second turn missing. So now I'm using my Staff of Striking. 20 and 19 is a hit. So they have three strikes left. That's six damage. So they have 12 hit points left. And then Gnarl is going to attack with his claws again with six and 19. 619 is at 2x. That's 10 damage. So they only have two hit points left. That was awesome. Now it is their turn, though. So 12 and 19 is a hit. Shit. And they did 12 hit points. Oof. Oof. All right, that's a lot of damage. That's a ridiculous amount of damage. Now it's our turn. I'm gonna do Staff of Striking again. We got, well, they have two hit points, so my dagger could do it. Okay, so my dagger is 20 and seven is a hit, and that kills them. Sweet. Holy cow, that was a tough battle. My goodness. Wow. All right, so if you defeat the Draconians, turn to page 70. Jeez. Okay, and this is the image. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is it. There's only one door at the end of the upper hall. Opening it quietly, you peer inside. All you see is a large room with cushions, pillows, and rugs scattered about. The ceiling of the room has broken open. Several places, I'm sorry, several paces into the room, you spot an old man standing in the shadows watching you. Is he after the dragon wand too, you wonder? Hello again, he says. What are you doing sneaking around my home? Your home? When the old man fails to answer you, you add, We're looking for something. Do you know where the dragon wand is? So you would steal from me? Well, you can't have it. As the old man yells, a peculiar fuzziness begins to appear all over him. He looks almost as if he's melting, until the fuzziness takes on the shape of a dragon. The old man is turning into a large red dragon. I'm Cinder. That's what you are about to become, the dragon hisses. Oh, shit. <laughs> to stay and try to deal with the evil dragon, turn to page 81. If you try to escape, turn to page 91. All right, guys, 81 or 91. Do you think we have to fight the dragon? Is there a way that we could sneak around in this book to get the dragon wand to then come back to dr the dragon and control him? What do you think? I have no idea, so I'm like I'm I'm honestly just sort of hands in the air. I'm not sure what to do. Fight the dragon or try to find another way. Let me know. I just finished my coffee. Oh wow, we're at two hours. Time flies. Oops, I just hit my mic. My hit points, I mean, you can see on the screen right here, I have 14 hit points for Lord Eriken and 15 hit points for Gnarl. It's not great. <laughs> it's not great at all. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, don't, I don't know if I can take a dragon. Like, this gem of spell turning doesn't matter because that was only against Lord Patrick. So I have the Scroll of Shock and Grasp. Fuck. I'm going to try to go around him. I, d I just don't think I can take on a dragon right now. So 91. Oh my gosh. I think that was a mistake. 
Look at the image. The old man was very old and seemed to move feebly. Maybe the dragon will also be slow in fighting. You hope so as you turn and run for the door. Unfortunately, as your hand grips the door handle, you hear the harsh sound of indrawn breath. Then the dragon's flaming breath meets your neck. 149. Oh my gosh. Is this a total party wipe? Oh my gosh! Oh, dude! 149. Rest in peace, Lord Arikin. You are defeated. Defeat is a word foreign to you. It's hard for you to accept what you, <laughs> that you are dying. Even harder to accept is the defeat. All your dreams of avenging your father's death are dying with you. Now that damned unworthy Kitiara will take over the world with no one to stop her. It's painful to die without ever making a name for yourself, without ever truly being a dragon high lord, especially when that stupid knight of Salamnia will now have a free path to the dragon wand. Nope, he's dead too. He'll be the one to take home the glory that should be yours, but perhaps your spirit will remain here to haunt others. Total party wipe. <laughs> All right, that was the full playthrough. <laughs> I have no luck with these books. The other Choose Your Own Adventure ones I played, I died in all those too. I was so close. If I just would have fought the dragon, at least I would have had a chance. Don't ever run from, turn your back on a dragon. That's the lesson here. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> Should I try this some, sometime again? Like, would you guys watch it again if I started over from scratch? And maybe, who knows? Maybe Lord Patrick will win this time. Ugh. Well, that is it for this episode of Gaming Dragonlance, Dragon Wand of Kryn. What did you think of the game book? Have you ever been a fan of the Choose Your Own Adventure style novellas? And do you have a favorite book? Lastly, what do you think about the advanced Dungeons and Dragons mechanics used in this game book? Feel free to email me at info at dragonlance-saga or leave a comment below. Thank you for tuning in. I would like to once again invite you to consider becoming a patron or member of this channel, and you can pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate links, all of which are in the description below. This channel is all about celebrating the wonderful world of the Dragonlance Saga, and I hope you'll join me in the celebration. Thank you for watching, this has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, Slan Javar.